Welcome to our Christmas Eve online service. We are so glad you're joining us today. You know, God's indescribable gift to us was his love sent down from above. Together, we come to worship our amazing God. So let's worship and give praise to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please join us in the call to worship. Light of light, shine in our hearts and renew our hope. Joy to the world, Emmanuel has come. Light of light, shine in our hearts and grant us peace. Joy to the world, Emmanuel has come. Light of light, shine in our hearts and bring us true joy. Joy to the world, Emmanuel has come. Light of light, shine in our hearts and fill us with love. Joy, Joy to, to the world, world. Emmanuel has, has come. Sweet hymns 
Tonight, we light all five candles, the candles of hope, peace, joy, love, and family, the Christ candle, celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. The candle of hope reminds us that in sending Christ, God sent hope to the earth. The candle of peace reminds us that peace will one day reign. The candle of joy is a reminder that we have been given eternal life and have no reason to be fearful. And the candle of love represents God's redeeming love for us, brought to earth in the form of a tiny child. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of light, tonight we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We thank you for this, the most precious of Christmas gifts, and we ask that you keep the hope, peace, joy, and love of this season in our hearts, now and throughout the coming year. Emmanuel, God is with us, now and forevermore. Amen. Our first lesson today comes from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the great joy given to us in Jesus. Thank you for the joy and peace that floods our hearts. Thank you that in your presence is a fullness of joy, for you alone are our abiding hope. Your purpose was to walk this earth in complete love and then sacrificially give your life as an atonement for the sins of all your children. Emmanuel, God with us, the greatest gift of all, came that first Christmas all because of love. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to send Jesus. Lord, we lift up our spoken prayers for Jim and Mary Jo, Sylvia, Ella, Travis, Sue, Don, Linda, Kay, Brian, Susan, Dean, Ralph, Bunk and Catherine, Mike, Lori, Mark, Katie, Devin, Kathy, Joe, Donovan, Judy, Annie, Christine, Paul, Winnie, Rose, Eleanor, Sherry and Larry, Gloria and Ben. Lord, you know what they need. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for our first responders, medical workers, essential workers and support staff. We also pray for our military. We pray for your comfort and strength and ask that you place a hedge of protection around all of our servicemen and women and their families. Lord, we pray for our nation. May you heal our land. Lord, we pray for all our home worshipers. Lord, bring them comfort and lift their spirits. Lord, we also pray for all the homeschool moms and dads the students, teachers, administrators, school bus drivers. Lord, we ask that you lift their spirits and draw them close to you. Lord, we pray for Chickie's Church and the many churches in our local community throughout the world. 
May your light shine through the church. Lord, we praise you and thank you for all you have done and ask of these things in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for your generosity and faithful giving. We are blessed because of you to continue to support our missionaries and local communities. As we have done the last several years, this year we will share half of our Christmas Eve offering with those in our local community and the world who need to feel God's love in some very practical ways. Our administrative council voted to share one half of our offering with our United Methodist Connectional Ministries. So let's recognize our Lord and Savior with joy in our hearts. And as the Lord speaks to your heart today, we ask that you consider mailing or going to our website and placing an online giving for your special offering so that we are able to continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in our community, nation, and around the world. Lord, we pray that you bless these gifts. Bless the giver as well. 
Use these gifts in a bold and mighty way to continue to grow your kingdom. Lord, we lift them up before thee. We ask for thy blessings in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Over the past few weeks, we have prepared for this day. We have asked questions. Why did Jesus come to be born to be the savior of the world? You know, Jesus answered this in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44, to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Listen to these words. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. You know, Jesus came to, to satisfy all the prophecies found in the Old Testament concerning his coming. There have been over 300 prophecies from Genesis to Malachi, speaking of the coming of the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, a savior who would come to, to rescue his people and restore them to God. I want us to listen to these words God gave the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. Now, Isaiah also said in chapter nine, verse six, seven, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Where will this child be born? Well, God answers this question in Micah 5.2. It says, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. What the prophet Micah has stated here is that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, but also said that Jesus' beginning was from the past and not from the birth place in Bethlehem. The prophet Jeremiah tells us in chapter 23, verses five and six, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. You know, God, and I believe this, leaves no stone unturned for the prophecies that will lead to the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came in the flesh to fulfill these prophecies according to the word of God. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is God. And God's word tells us this and affirms it in John chapter 14, verses eight and nine and verse 11, listen to these words. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Jesus is God and dwelt among us to show us what God was really like. Our challenge this evening, as we have each and every week, is this. Will we risk and place our trust in God's joyful Will you join with me now as we come to the Lord in prayer? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. And we pray, Lord, that you open our minds and our hearts to your word. Fill us with your grace. May we feel your presence now. And most importantly, Lord, may you receive 
the honor, glory, and praise in all that we do. We lift this up before thee and we pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Since the beginning of creation, God has always spoken. He spoke to, to Adam and Eve. He spoke to Moses and he spoke through the prophets. But a time came in which God did not speak for, well, over 400 years. He was silent. When he did decide to break his silence, well, the first person he spoke to was a man named Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. And he did this through his messenger, the angel Gabriel. Then came more angelic messengers. And these messengers, they foretold how Jesus' birth would fulfill God's promise of hope to the entire world. Now the birth of Jesus would take place in, well, humble circumstances. Jesus enters the world and laid to rest in a manger, in a stable. You know, if we were to write the script ourselves, would we have written it out that way? I don't think so. I believe Jesus' birth is a powerful display of God's faithfulness to bring hope, peace, joy, and love to the world. And through this couple, Mary and Joseph, yes, Mary and Joseph, they risked, they trusted in God's joyful hope. So God would, would come in the flesh as a baby. And the text tells us in Matthew, Emmanuel, God with us. God would bring good news that would cause great joy for all the people. Now the circumstances of Jesus' birth, well, they're basic and humble. In contrast, most regal figures are born with, well, great ceremony and celebration. When we go into God's word, we'll see how God celebrates this. I want us to take a look at our gospel reading this evening, found in the gospel of Luke, chapter two, verses one through seven. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a, dec a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we dive into our text, we see that this is, this is God's word. And it comes, comes to a point where we ask questions. Why? Why travel to Bethlehem? What does the text teach us here? We see we see Mary and Joseph having to travel to Bethlehem from their hometown of Nazareth to be, well, counted in a census. So a little digging tells us that the travel was about 110 miles. They traveled on foot and maybe, maybe even riding a donkey. And I believe Mary, Mary wasn't too thrilled to be traveling away from home on her you know, during her final trimester and this unwanted journey. 
His journey is to one's own town to register appears to be for, well, paying more taxes. But then the text tells us, it reveals something else to us, that while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Mary gives birth to a son, wraps him in clothes and place him in, the text tells us, manger, a feeding trough. Why? God's promises to us is to, to bring about salvation. It's his redeeming love for us. Brought to this earth in the form of, of this tiny child that would be a gift, a gift from God that will bring light, light to our dark world. You know, diving into scripture and we we talk about light and darkness. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and verse 14, it speaks of this darkness. Listen to these words. In the beginning was the Word. Now, if I stopped right there and said, every time I say the Word, I want you to put the, the, the word Jesus there. So, in the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. But the darkness has not understood it. Jesus became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus came, he came to earth to save all people from their sin. But God's gift came for many other reasons as well. God's gift to all came it came at a cost. Now the prophet Isaiah told us, told us this. And as we, we spoke of the sacrifices in which, in which we may, the prophets of old spoke and we see each and every day the cost of this. Those things that we battle because of our faith. So during all that has truly transpired throughout time, throughout the scripture, let us be aware that God is in control and is working to redeem the world. I always think about Mary and her travels and I believe that all of us, all of us at one time will take an unwanted journey. But remembering that God always walks with us on those journeys. I believe this is hope, to believe that God can take whatever uncertain journey we are on to accomplish his purposes, if we allow it. And I believe this was the hope, the belief that kept Mary going on on her long, difficult journey to Bethlehem. What's interesting in the Gospel of Luke that the text continues and it shifts, it shifts to those first witnesses, the shepherds. They're the first ones to come to see the newborn king. In Luke chapter two, verses eight through 12, it says, and there were shepherds living out in fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. Again, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, I love it, today, not next week, not two months from now, today, 
in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. You know, God had one more message for the shepherds that evening. And it's recorded in 13, verse 13 and 14. It says, suddenly a great company, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. I don't know about you, I can only imagine how bright and how loud the praising of God was that evening. See, darkness, darkness was upon the shepherds for many years and upon the people of Israel. But the light, the light had come in the flesh. Jesus was going to save people from their sin. And he was also going to give peace to God's favored people. Those who believe, those who in their hearts are open and believe. The shepherds indeed heard the good news that was for all the people. And at this point in the story, God tells us what the shepherds do. This is their gift, their gift to God. Verse 15 and 16, God says, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened, which the Lord has told us about. These are the shepherds that cared for the sheep, all the sheep, and they were going to leave the sheep because the text says, so they hurried off and found Mary, Joseph, and the baby who was lying in a manger. They, they decided, they responded to God's word. This gift, this gift that the shepherds gave to God is a gift that we should give back to God. It is something we should emulate in our witness as we respond to God's word. And Luke chapter two, verse 17 says, when they had seen the child, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. Remember, God had told the shepherds that Jesus was good news for all the people. Good news. Good news of what Jesus Christ has done for them. What God has done for them. 400 years of silence and now their hearts are open and light has overcome the darkness. When they decided to risk by spreading the word. They had no idea how they would be received. They were so filled, the text tells us, with joy and amazement that they just had to go and tell others. It's something when we receive God's word and something happens to us, maybe it's in a message, maybe it's in a song, maybe it's in serving, maybe it's in giving. That you are so filled with joy and amazement that you want to give back. And this is what the shepherds did. How would people receive this good news coming from shepherds that weren't even, well, they were outcast of their time. Not trusted at all. But God's word tells us in verse 18 that all were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. They didn't push him away. There was something about their witness to the people. The people were thrilled to receive the good news. It's the same today. Sharing the good news to those around us. The shepherds came and saw the baby in the manger, just as the angel had said. 
See, I believe most importantly that when that happened, their hearts were changed. There was a transformational change. And as they went out into the night sharing that good news and they came in contact with people, people could see and they could feel, as the word says, they were amazed at the message they received. And then the text goes on and says, when the shepherds returned back to their flocks, they were glorifying and praising God for this gift that God had gave them. They worship God. That was their worship. See, Jesus is God. And he came to earth to dwell in you and me. His love for us is is so strong that he came to earth to seek you and me. I believe there is no doubt that sometimes we ourselves become weary and tired. We become lonely, distraught. But Jesus came. He came to earth to give us rest. He came to earth to lift up our spirits. He came to earth save, to save us from eternal death. He came to heal our hearts. God gave all of us the free gift, free gift of Jesus Christ. Will you accept this free gift? Maybe you don't deserve this gift. You feel deep down, I, I, I don't deserve it. And maybe you believe this gift is for, well, maybe somebody else. I love what the Apostle Paul says about it. He says that in 2 Corinthians 9, 15, but thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Jesus says, God says that, that Jesus is so wonderful that our minds cannot comprehend all that he is. But through his word, he tells us that many truths about Jesus to help us to understand that Jesus came to save and transform the world. The gospel message, the good news. It's a transformational change. So on this Christmas Eve, I want to make this message as personal for you and me as I possibly can. God wants us to know that Jesus came to earth to show you and me the full extent of his love. He came to personally take our sins and place them on himself so that we could have eternal life. I want us to think about this for a second. He took on flesh, Emmanuel, God with us so that you and I could know him personally. Everything you and I experience, see, he also experienced. And that's important for us to know. This Christmas Eve says that grace meets you where you are and saves you while you cannot do a thing to save yourself. That's what grace is. So this evening, celebrate. Celebrate the first advent that Christ has come, not to a mansion, but to a manger. Celebrate that God continues to keep his promises. That God's word is true. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. See, the Christmas story is indeed all about love. God's love for us. But the most important part of the story is his love for all. We love because God first loved us. And I believe we cannot be a true Christian without Christ and without this love. 
God's word tells it best, John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus is our Savior who has come to take away our sins. See, I love what the Apostle Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.15. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. See, the Christmas story would be just a Christmas story and it would be a really great Christmas story if it ended right there in the manger, but it didn't. The Christmas story extends to the cross. See, Jesus was born in the manger and he came to save us from our sins where he died on the cross for those sins. He defeated death and rose from the dead and ascended into the heavenly realm to be with us. God the Father, and leave us with the Holy Spirit. And he said he would return one day. This is the second advent, preparing our hearts for the second advent. God's gift to us is love. He is ready to transform your life and others through you, sharing God's love through the good news of Jesus Christ, glorifying and praising God for his indescribable gift to all. Amen. Will you join with me now as we close in prayer? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, It is your people in this silent moment, in this stillness, may we feel your presence. We give thanks that you stepped down from heaven to earth through your son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. We are grateful for your mission of love to us who could never earn or deserve it. We are trusting you with our present and also our futures. Be, be Lord, be Lord in our heart today. We pray this all in Jesus' precious name for all of God's people said, amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round the unvirgin mother and child. Holy infant so
God comes to us now, comes to embrace us. Emmanuel, God who is with us, a gift beyond all gifts. Follow this child who is grace beyond all grace. Go in peace and love to serve your newborn King. Amen. Our worship service is over. His service begins. Merry Christmas. <laughs>